thank you and for joining me once again for the building of Big Blue. Uh, last time, uh, this uh, let me uh, let me apologize just a little bit. Uh, this uh, video is a little delayed. Uh, uh, various reasons, weather, component uh, delivery, health issues, uh, not mine, uh, family issues. But I think that's all behind us now, so I think we can move ahead. At, uh, at last film, we had the assembly of the <coughs> guide rails and bearings uh, put in. Remember, we, we used uh, steel shims for our spacing, for our uh, uh, lateral spacing in the, in, the X, in the X direction. Today, we'll go ahead and finish the mock-up uh, for the Z axis. Uh, we'll, we'll mock it up all the way 100%, and then I will knock it down for the last time, I hope, add some color to the, uh, to the steel plates, um, mostly for surface protection, and we'll put it back together, mount it up to the uh, gantry, and I will call that operation good to go. Um, we'll go ahead and do a preliminary lineup again. Remember, last time we just used the framing square, and the purpose of the framing square was simply to get us close. It's not what we're going to do our, for our final uh, alignment with. But we'll actually tram the spindle in once we get everything all put together and moving. So we'll tram the X and the Y, and uh, we'll get it uh, as close to zero, 0 as we can get it using a dial indicator. And that's uh, once, we, once we're at that point, uh, we'll go ahead and mount the, the Y uh, ball screws and motors and, and start, uh, start getting a little closer to what we want to call finish on this. So I'm getting anxious. Uh, for those of you that are following this build, uh, I would suggest if you don't have a well-stocked uh, hardware bin uh, in your shop, uh, calculate what you'll need for your hardware components cost-wise and double it. <laughs> I, I found out that uh, uh, Sometimes uh, the screws that I buy are either just a little bit too long, a little bit too short, and you're going back in and buying something in between. Uh, of course, that, uh, that just runs the price up a little bit. So figure what you'll need for hardware and fasteners, uh, cost-wise, and I think you could safely say just double that. You'll hit it pretty close. Uh, I know I'm going to have a lot of extra hardware. So at any rate, that's neither here nor there. So, uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and start the uh, start the mock-up, and we'll go from there. You remember, I did my spacing. I found my spacing. I couldn't find. I needed 20 millimeters, and I couldn't find 20 millimeter bar stock for whatever reason. And I opted not to use two tens and stack them. So I I purchased uh, oversized stock and machined them down. Uh, now, in all fairness, I have to confess that I used, uh, I used a Bridgeport milling machine to take these to size. Uh, a friend of mine has, uh, has a nice uh, garage shop, and I was able to use his, uh, his mill to take these to size. And uh, thank you to my, uh, to my friend for allowing me to do that. So far, that's, uh, everything else has been done with all simple hand tools. And uh, I... I could probably have uh, used the 10 millimeter stock, stacked them together, uh, clamped them, uh, uh, basically screwed them together, and put all my holes in them. And, you know, but I, I didn't want to go that, to that trouble. Uh, that may be an option that you'll want to try. So, at any rate, I have uh, my, I don't want to call them shims, pretty thick shim. I want to call them a spacer at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and put the spacer on. I'll get the spacer set up on each one of the linear uh, linear bearing blocks, and uh, I think before I do that, let me zoom in a little bit so you get a little better view. Okay, uh, that uh, that should give you a little better view. Uh, lacking an overhead camera, this is just about as good as it's going to get uh, for my setup. At any rate, we've got the. Uh, uh, our
fissure blocks mounted up, sitting in place, they're not actually mounted yet. But if you take my router mounting plate and just sit it on top of the spacers and drop a couple of screws in place. For a quick alignment, and I'm using flathead screws. Which, if your layout is accurate, a flathead screw will 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 assist in your in your alignment of your components. It's, it's kind of it's kind of like self-centering. Uh, it's not as good as a doll pin, however, but uh, they do pretty good. And I'm just doing a visual now, looking down through the spacer uh, into the uh, tapped holes on the bearing blocks, just to kind of make sure that I've got things visually centered, which feels pretty good, looks good there, and we'll go ahead and tighten this down. And I'm not going to put all of the screws in, uh, simply because I'm going to take it apart here in a, in a, in a bit, and I'll knock it all the way down to uh, the individual components so that I can paint this, uh, this guide rail mount and the spindle mount plate, um, put some color on it to protect the surface from, uh, from corrosion. And I see, I see right off the get-go that I put the spacers in, rotated 180 degrees. And the reason I know that is because because I, I drill and tap holes for the for the spindle mounting block has clearance in the blocks for the screws to pass through. And I would suggest unless your screws are exact to length, you'll probably have to, if you do a spacer similar to what I'm using, uh, you'll have to uh, put some relief holes in your in your blocks uh, just for that reason to allow the screws just to pass through. Uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise you'll you'll have an interference. So let's try this one more time. Line the plate visually down. Just locate the hole. Same thing on this side. Just a visual on it. Uh, bump it over just a tad. <laughs> bearing back into position now that I've wiggled everything out of position. Try that one more time. And I'm just giving the the screws a quick wiggle to help center everything up, move the bearing back up. All right. Now I know from by from how I set these up that these surfaces are flush. Um, that's how I set my my layout up. So we'll, we'll flush that. Snug that down. Flush this one. Again, this is just this is all this is all by feel. I'm not using an indicator to line any of this up. Hopefully, at the end of the day, it doesn't come around. And and it caused me a problem. So I'm taking a little bit of care. I'm spending some time getting it where 
I set it up to be. Push my spindle mounting bracket up into position. It's a little snug. Now I set this purposely to have a little bit of preload on my bearings. And the reason for that is I want the uh, the assembly to be a little snug. Otherwise, with the, the combined weight of the first blade, spindle mount, spindle, uh, you could overcome the magnetic drag of your motor. And the thing, basically, when you turn the power off, the thing will just unwind and screw itself right down to the table or your workpiece, which you don't want to do. Uh, so uh, I, I have just a little bit of a preload on it. Uh, so that it just kind of snugged everything up just a tad so that it will not move on its own. I hope. Spindle mounting plate is on. Oh, my word. It will not move. I, I feel comfortable that this will not unwind. Uh, the true test will be once I once I mount the uh, the spindle motor and everything up to it, I get it vertical, and I'll I'll give it a spin uh, by hand. And if it continues to spin, uh, I'll either have to uh, install more preload or heaven forbid, put a brake on it. And I'm trying to stay away from a brake, so that it, it's just. A brake is just an extra component uh, that I don't want to mess with right now, so we'll uh, go ahead and get, uh, get the spindle mount uh, kind of mocked in. Again, Finger snug is good enough right now, it's all going to come apart. And the end result will be the spindle itself. Now there, <laughs> there's some information on, the, on your spindle. Uh, I like to put, uh, that's been laser etched, uh, giving you information about the spindle itself. I like to try to put that forward facing or someplace where I can actually see it. Uh, you never know when you all need that information. So I'm going to snug this down just a bit to keep the spindle uh, in place. I'm going to lock it in. Okay, it's not coming out of there. And it moves really, really nice. It's smooth, no binds. Um, I'm going to have to, I, I do know for a fact that I'm going to have to put a positive stop someplace um, because I can drive the bearing carriages off the rails, both coming down and going up. So I'm not worried so much about it going up. Uh, there'll be a limit switch there. Ho hopefully the limit switch doesn't fail. But uh, coming down, uh, you could uh, you could basically drive the, the bearing off the rail, uh, which you don't want to do. I had hoped that I could the bearing nut would come up and bottom against my my bottom uh, floating bearing, but uh, or the ball nut, it, it, it misses it by about three eighths of an inch. Oh, so uh, I'll I'll put a positive stop. I think probably what I'll do is uh, build the uh, <laughs> build the bottom screws up so that the heads actually protrude, and uh, basically the head of the screw will stop. 
So uh, unless I'm driving it really, really hard, I don't think I can shear that bolt off. So it moves nice and free by hand. Let's, let's stand the thing up and see if it'll, if I can pull it down. Let me get a little vertical room to pull. And I, I'll tell you right now, it's going. It's what heavy dude. Uh, it is very, very heavy. Uh, I, <laughs> for my own curiosity, I'm going to get a weight on it. I, I'm, I, I can't even begin to tell you what the weight on this thing is, but uh, it is heavy. But it does, it does come down. So I guess I'm going to, I'm going to have to try to put some, uh, some more preload on that bearing. Uh, just to uh, keep it from unscrewing by itself. Uh, not what I wanted, but it's not the end of the world. I guess the, uh, the movement on the carriage is just too good. So there we have it. I'm going to uh, knock it down. I'll put, uh, I'll set it up for a little more preload. I'll go ahead and put some color on my on my uh, mounting plates. We'll do a final assembly, and I would ask that you join me for mounting it up to the uh, to the carriage, uh, the gantry. We'll uh, get ready to move on to the next step. So thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you here uh, shortly. Uh, the next video won't be uh, won't be spaced out quite so long. So, thank you, have a good day, and uh, until I see you again, continue building.